Let's talk about how to help you with running through, moving up poles, confidence, and all the other little psychological things pole vaulters face. Let's go. Welcome to the Pole Vault Vlog. My name is Sean Francis, and here we talk everything how to launch people to the moon before Elon Musk gets there with a fiberglass stick. It's not my best, it's pretty good though commercials. This vlog is sponsored by me. I try and create tools to help you pole vault higher. Simple as that. If you like to read, this is full of pages and words to help you read more. If you don't like to read, we have a pole vault course where it's all video. It's also there if you're illiterate and don't know how to read. We also sell three month training programs. If you start right now, you will be the fastest you've ever been by the time indoor starts. And the last rumor I heard, knock on wood, Reno is happening this year. Oh, and only one more week to get those uh, pole vault shirts for 50% off. I like this one a lot. The last little thing before we get into the psychology of the pole vault stuff. Due to popular request, I am starting pole vault reviews back up where I will review your videos here on this channel. All you have to do is add me on Instagram, at Team Hoot Pole Vault. Tag at Team Hoot Pole Vault on your Instagram channel for a chance for me to review your video on here. Or if you wanna make sure your video 100% gets reviewed, go over to team-hoot.com and there is a video review option over there for you too. That's how we're doing this. All right, pole vault psychology. Um, as some of you may have noticed, I did not make a lot of pole vault vlogs last year. And I've been debating if I wanted to share this with, with you or not, but it hit me that the first time I ever talked publicly about my mental health was on this vlog in 2014 with, with you. <laughs> So I've had this ongoing battle with depression since I was in second grade. So I haven't been making as many pull up vlogs because in the last year I have been creating and launching um, a mental health project that is called One Whole Life Media or Owl Media. OneWholeLifeMedia.com And as I'm talking to you, I, this sounds really funny to say out loud, but I have I have some guilt surrounding it. I feel kind of, there's part of me that feels guilty. <laughs> because I feel like the pole vault community, you guys, are, are part of my family. I'm a, we're a part of the same tribe. And by spending some time away from the tribe, away from you, um, it's been painful. The last year I, I did less camps, I made less videos, I've been posting less because of, of this mental health thing. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it hurts. Something keeps pushing me towards doing this other project. The, the same thing that made me start making pole vault videos in the first place, and for the first time in a long time, I feel pretty good. And, I, and I'm excited to create again. So I just want you to know that even if I'm not around as much, it doesn't mean I'm not thinking about you. So if you're curious about anything I'm doing, head over to onewholelifemedia.com. Um, there's vlogs and there's podcasts and um, ways to try and help end the pole, the mental health stigma, the pole vault stigma. There's a stigma in pole vault. No, the mental health stigma. We're <laughs> trying to end the mental health stigma. So with this project, this mental health project, I had the amazing opportunity to talk with one of the best sports psychologists in the entire world, maybe even universe. But if there's aliens doing sports psychology, Robert Andrews is probably better than them. He's worked with Olympic pole vaulters, professional sports teams, all kinds of Olympians, I can't even name them all, but one famous one you might've heard of is Simone Biles, not to name drop or anything. And the podcast I had with him, I wanted to talk specifically about pole vault stuff and I launched the video over at One Whole Life Media yesterday, so it's live. And I asked him about all sorts of pole vault stuff. Why do vaulters run through and how do you fix that? Now, what are the triggers? Going up a height, bigger pole. Uh, the, the guy or the girl in front of me cleared a height by this much and it, it freaked me out a little bit. Or I looked at my parents and they're frowning at me in the stands or uh, it's raining, or a big one with pole vaulters, the wind. What can athletes do if they have toxic coaches or, or a toxic sporting team environment? What I've done is I got tired of trying to, to deal with toxic sports cultures. Yeah. Now, I just empower the athlete and educate the parents. What does Robert say to parents when they go, hey, my kid wants to quit the sport, I'm hiring you to tell him that he needs to keep doing the sport? 
my son or daughter's in gymnastics or swimming or diving or try whatever it is, and they want to quit. Would you help them keep going? And I said, I'll help them make the right decision. Yeah, I love that. And finally, we talked about all sorts of tools that are going to help athletes perform at their very best. <sighs> deep centering breath, execute the next point. I only had 90 minutes to talk with him and we just kind of scratched the surface of all the tools that he uses. His book, The Champion's Mental Edge, is absolutely fantastic and it dives deep into a lot of these things. And look, I have this one bookmarked, The Energy Effort Graph. I'm using that one right now. Man, I wish I had this book when I was training, but you know, like, that would have been helpful, but you know what's really helpful? Having it right now because I'm literally using some of the things in this book that I've said it before that you know you can have sports psychology, child psychology, trauma. Uh, it, it's all psychology. It's all the same stuff. You can use mindfulness now. You can use mindfulness in in sports, and you can use mindfulness if you're running a business. It's all it's it's the same tools work in all these different areas. And so I'm jacked. I'm I'm learning so much in this book. I. Wish I had it sooner. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna share a clip of what Robert Andrews and I talked about pole vaulters, how to overcome the yips in running through and how he approaches uh, athletes to have them perform their best. And I encourage you to listen to the whole thing over at onewholelifemedia.com. I think it's really good. And if you like what I'm doing over there, help support it. Also, there is a link to this book in the description below if you would like to get a copy of it. It's freaking awesome. Like, let's just, let's just go through the chapters. The athlete's performance assessment, mindfulness and self-awareness in sports, the three pillars to peak performance, parenting athletes and enjoying the journey, overcoming mental blocks in sports, championship team culture, the mental and emotional impact of sports injuries. It's just like, it's so good. It makes me want to Thanks for watching. Next week, ooh, let me show you something. In the next video, I'll share what's in this box. Might be kind of exciting because it says Team Hoot and Rylan Pole Vault. Yep, we're doing more stuff together. As always guys, remember, there's more than one way to pole vault and I'll see you in the next one. I get, the most emails I get are how to invert and and I and running through. What do I do? I've been running through, or it's called the yips in pole vault. I've got the yips. I can't take a jump up. So, do you use those same type of types of things for for running through, or do you have any tricks or tools to help well, these I pole think, vaulters out? So I see yips in pole vaulting, yips with golfers, baseball players that that can't throw to first base, can't throw a strike. They throw the ball into the dug into the the net behind. Uh, I see gymnasts that can't do backward tumbling or backward skills on gymnasts, cheerleaders that can't do back tucks. Uh, you know, it's, it shows up. I've had a basketball player that his brain wouldn't let him shoot because he was afraid he would miss. It's always stress related. Okay. And so the first place I look are any injuries. So if I'm working with the pole vaulter and they have the yips, I say, you had any injuries? Well, yeah, I had a really bad broken pole incident where I landed on my head or, I broke my ankle or tore my ACL. And since then, well, uh, so we look at injuries and then we look at relationships with parents. We look at relationships with coaches. We look at how you doing managing your distractions in your life, because what happens, you know, if, if this is a scale right here, you're jumping fine this way, right? You keep adding stress onto the scale eventually the scale tips and the brain says there's too much going on up there and it's not safe for you to do this. So I'm going to have you run through because if you go up, you might get hurt. That's my interpretation of it. And I've worked with a lot of, a lot of these athletes that have yips and, and we seem to get, a, we seem to be very successful of helping them, but we have to, you know, you got to be open to taking a really good deep look at your life. You know, it's not a big, you're not going to breathe your way through it. You're not going to no, visualize right. your way through it either because there's a part of the brain that's trying to keep them safe and keep them from getting hurt. You know, reason never overrules emotion <laughs> and a traumatic experience like hurting your knee in the box or breaking an ankle in the box or a pole breaking that I've never done it, but that's got to be terrifying. So your, your limbic system in your brain lights up and goes, uh, uh this ain't going to happen again. So we, we resolve the trauma from an injury. We manage stress and distractions. We look at relationships with parents, coaches, boyfriends, girlfriends. It could be uh, a compilation of 
you know, I've worked with Olympic hopefuls who hold down two or three jobs and train. It could be a financial stressor. You know, I had one college, one girl was a uh, college gymnastics hopeful who couldn't do anything backwards on floor or beam. Hmm. And so we, we started working through her stress list. She was, hadn't taken her ACT, SAT. She was behind in her essays for her college application. She hadn't completed college applications. She was behind in her schoolwork and she had a teammate that every time it was time to go to bars, her teammate hit her grips. She snuck over to her bag and hit her grips under the, under the mats. Well, she could, she started doing, completing her essays. She took the SAT, ACT. She got caught up in her schoolwork. She manages all this. Okay, now we got to tackle the teammate that's messing with you. Well, she'll get in trouble. I said, well, what does your coach do when he can't find your grips? He makes me do conditioning. I said, so she went and talked to the coach about it. And the coach was like, why didn't you tell me? So the coach kicked the other girl out of the gym for a week and said, when you can be a better teammate, come back. So we resolve all these stressors. And I get this video of her doing her series on beam and tumbling on floor. So we, we got rid of the stress and her brain goes, thank you very much. Okay, now go do what you love to do. Hmm. And that's that's pretty successful. Just reducing stress is sometimes all you it need to do. It can be, but yeah. you also have to look at, like, every pole vaulter that, that has run-throughs or yips, if you ask them, there's usually a certain feeling in their body. Right, yeah. Like when they grip a bigger pole, that sends a signal to their brain, or that I have a knot in my stomach or a tightness in my chest. And if you ask them, if we look at pressure and intensity on a scale from zero to 10, where are you? Oh my gosh, I'm at a nine. Right. Where do you need to be? Like a five, you know, pole vaulters are pretty aggressive, five yeah. or six. But if there's that big difference, you know, why even go when you're at a nine? Because we know what's going to happen. Right. So we work with tools and concepts and techniques to bring that pressure, that adrenaline down and slide back into that zone before they run down the runway and then they have more success that way. So there's kind of multiple steps to it. Yeah. We look at stress, but there's also some sports psychology tools and concepts that they need to use. Um, like I said earlier, you know, as you get closer and closer to jumping, bring your focus in and then get into that sweet spot, you know, the right amount of stimulation and adrenaline to where your mind and body will, will react or respond remarkably to that. And, most of the time when they learn how to calm their stressors down, work through traumas from injuries, things like that. And then we call it getting centered before they jump. That means being in the right place, physically, mentally, emotionally, the brain says, thank you very much. Go for it. And they start, they start jumping. Now the problem can be, I'll get an email from a parent or an athlete and they'll say, well, I've got the yips. I've got this mental block. How long has it been going on? Oh, three years, four years. Well, that neurological imprinting has been getting, I call it the Grand Canyon. You know, you've been, yeah. you've been eroding this neurological imprint in your brain and your nervous system for three or four years. Sometimes those are very difficult cases to, to help right. because the, the imprinting is just so. It's deep. It's yeah. So, I, it's I live in Minnesota. Yeah. I think of it like sledding down this hill, right? You, you said Grand Canyon, the, kind of like the longer you sled down that hill over and over again, the deeper that's going to get. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So if I would imagine like if you have a, a snow, you know, that, you know, makes everything even, you know, <laughs> no matter how deep that groove is, you're going to have to do a lot of passes over it. Am I, am I kind of on the right track there with that analogy? Yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah. Or if you're, if you're going to make a run down the mountain and you want to go this way and you get anywhere close to that yep. groove, if you're in it, boom, yeah. off you go. And that can start with, oh my gosh, a bigger pole. Yeah. And there's some kind of reaction that goes on in the brain and the nervous system about that or um, uh, going up to a higher height. You know, like I had a girl, uh, she, she won the Texas state championship in pole vault. She holds the A&M was one of the, I worked with the last three record holders at, at Texas A&M university, awesome. you know, going back over the years. And I was at the state meet when this girl won the high school state meet. And there was a girl from an Austin high school. I thought, God almighty, there's, there's no way she's going to beat this girl today. This girl was just cranking it out, man, just blowing up over the, over yeah. the bar. It was awesome to watch. And the girl that I worked with was, was doing good, but she just didn't have that. This girl was committed to her jumps. It was really cool to see. Mm -hmm. They got up to 13 feet 
and I saw the girl that I was working with and the other girl doing this <laughs> and three and three and out. Yeah. And the girl that I worked with cleared 13 and then 13, two and a half. I think she missed at 13, four, but she ended up going to eight a and And I think she jumped like 14, four up there or something wow. like that. And, but what I noticed was when the bar got to a certain height, that girl that was so confident, everything changed Yeah, because she didn't have the tools to handle that change in perception. You know, I always say that pressure changes with changes in our perception about things, our attitude about things. Yeah. So when they got to 13, something clicked in her brain and she was not the same jumper. Yeah. 